Hey, happy Tuesday. Happy book review day. Today's book is Subway by John E. Morris. Uh, so this one, unlike the other one, is all about the New York subways. Um, and it really tells the story from the very beginning up to the present and all in between. Um, it's a beautiful book. I mean, the cover's cool, um, but the layout is really pretty. There's this whole section with maps that are just kind of glorious. Uh, so visually, it is a stunning book. And then the history is super interesting. Um, my favorite part about it probably was learning about Frank Sprague. And uh, he was a contemporary of Edison and a lot of the you know, early 1900s inventors. Um, although Frank Sprague has kind of fallen by the wayside. Um, and his innovation was with electric motors. Um, and it was really interesting to learn more about him. He started kind of with elevators. And then as an engineer, he also worked on skyscrapers and then ultimately on the subway trains. Um, one of the things they were stuck with on sub subway trains was figuring out how to retrofit an actual train into tunnels. And when you're dealing with steam or coal, uh, which were the two primary train motors at the time, you don't want that trapped in a tunnel, right? Because it gets hot and it causes noxious fumes. And so they're trying to experiment with electric motors, but they were very stuck in the mindset of having an engine at the front or at the back. And Sprague's invention was, what if we just put motors on each car? And so he put a motor in the front and the back of each car, which was more power than that car needed to carry all the people on it. And so exponentially it gained horsepower or whatever, pulling power, pushing power, um, the more cars you added to it. Um, and there's this, I left a little sticky here because there's this little section I was gonna read, which says the true parent of the subway is the elevator or better yet, the grandparent journalist Ray Stannard Baker observed in 1905. The elevator made possible the skyscraper, and the skyscraper led to underground transportation. And he might have added that Sprague was the great grandparent of both. Um, so his intervention in the elevator, which was the call button, you know, being able to summon whichever is the closest elevator um, from a bank of eleva elevators, was one of the things he did. And of course, you have to remember, like, this is the late 1880s, 1890s, no computers. And so they're doing this mechanically. Um, one of the things that Morris does a really good job of is breaking down complex things. And so he talks about how the subway functions so that subway cars have, I think it's a thousand feet between them at any given time. And there are a series of switches and toggles, at least originally on the tracks when they were first developed, so that if one, so then one car was notified that it was essentially going too fast and it would slow down, and so that they always maintain that distance. Um, yeah, there's, in addition to the actual building the subway, there's a chapter in here all about like contests. Um, and marketing campaigns to get more people to ride the trains and um, trying to, there's a chapter actually on people who died on the trains. Um, there's a chapter about all the different kind of subway cars that over the years, um, uh, books and movies and plays that took place on the subway um, I mean, he really does a good job of gathering all of the information. And at the very end, there is a timeline that breaks down everything. Um, and so if you want just the facts, ma'am, for instance, um, it gives you that. Um, so after you read the whole book, then at the very end, you have this kind of breakdown there. But I, I really enjoyed it. You know, super interesting to, you know, again, to learn about something that I hadn't given a lot of thought to. And all of the little pieces of history that were kind of lost or forgotten along the way. Uh, for instance, I didn't know the subways used to be independently owned. And so they were not owned by the city. They were privately owned. And there were kind of three different um, rail systems, which is part of why they're numbered and colored differently. Um, 
because that goes back to the original ownership of those. So anyway, I would definitely recommend Subway, Curiosity, Secrets, and Unofficial History of the New York City Transit System, John E. Morris. Uh, I'm not sure what's unofficial about it, other than maybe he didn't ask to write the book, um, because it's as detailed as I can imagine a book being. I would definitely recommend. Bye. What are you reading? Have a good day.